Just want to quickly go over some of the minutia of the course before we start diving into the material and what you can expect this semester and what we're going to be doing. So obviously this is uh, systems analysis and design. We focus on object-oriented systems analysis and design in this course. Uh, so this is what you can expect throughout the semester. First, um, you're going to want to read the book. Um, so there is a textbook for the course. You'll find that in the syllabus. Um, throughout the, uh, just a few words about the textbook. It's, it's um, a little different than a lot of other systems analysis and design textbooks. One thing that's different about this one is it takes a project-based approach to teaching systems analysis and design. One of the things I've noticed over the years teaching this course is a lot of students say, you know, when I read the book, it, it makes sense, but I don't know how to apply any of this stuff in the real world. Um, you know, what exactly do I do when I, when I do a project? Um, so one of the nice things about this book is that it actually shows you real world examples. You're actually doing, it's based around real world cases. So you follow these case studies throughout the book, throughout the chapters, and it shows you examples of what the deliverables for those real world cases would look like for the material in each chapter. Um, one of the other things that's different about this book is it dives right into systems analysis in the very beginning. A lot of other books talk about project management and, um, you know, what is a systems analyst and all that kind of stuff first. But this one, right in the first chapter, it goes right into activities with systems analysis. So kind of nice uh, with this book that we get right into the material and we don't waste a lot of time. But uh, the other thing that's a little different about this book um, is that uh, it has running cases that... Um, uh, that it can that we can use to do some projects. So, um, you know, in a typical course like this, a lot of times your instructor will ask everyone to break into small groups or groups of four, or groups of three, and do a group project together. And, you know, I, that's a, an okay way to do that. And, and a lot of professors that teach a course like this, systems analysis, have a tendency to want to um, to make a large portion of it uh, as the group project. Which is okay, but the, the, the problem I always have with the group projects is people seem to get lost in the details of the project rather than focusing on the, um, on the systems analysis activities and learning the systems analysis methodologies and techniques that we cover in the course. So instead of doing a group project or instead of doing a, a semester-long project, instead, we're going to use one of the running cases in the book um, that does not have examples. So there are some running cases with examples, some running cases without examples. So the ones without the examples, I picked one of them, um, and we're going to use that throughout the semester as sort of our project. So each week it's going to ask you to go through some of that stuff. So you'll notice that in the book as well. Uh, one thing I can recommend about the book is um, uh, it is rather expensive if you buy it from the bookstore, if you buy a physical copy of it, and it's probably pretty hard to find used. Um, but you can get an electronic copy from Cengage, and I think it's like $70, so um, it's significantly less expensive, and I highly recommend the electronic version. You can read it anywhere online. You just sign into your Cengage account. Um, definitely a better option than getting the, uh, the the physical version of the book, which I think is almost $300. So I highly recommend getting the, uh, the electronic version instead. Um, so the other thing, uh, each unit, when you sign in, uh, you're going to see an assignment for each unit. Um, basically, the assignments are recapping what we've done in that unit or what we discussed in that unit. Uh, so it's a good refresher, a good review of what we've done. They are graded. Um, they won't be graded in real time. You know, obviously we have to go back and, and, and grade the material because it's all free form. So, uh, so you won't find multiple choice questions and true, false, and things like that. You're literally just answering the questions. You don't have to give a long answer, uh, one sentence. Most of them can be answered in one or two sentences. Uh, some of them can be answered with a couple bullet points. So nothing crazy, just... You know, you're just demonstrating that you uh, that you recall the material or that you um, understand the material, and of course, that's really more for you than it is for anyone else. So each week or each unit, you're going to want to make sure you uh, you do those um, those assignment uh, questions. There's also going to be a discussion forum, so you can participate in the discussion forums. They will be graded each week. Um, that's how we assess your your participation in the course. Um, so I will post a starter thread. Or a starter question, you'll find it in the uh, in the content area for the discussion uh, each week, um, or the content item, I should say. Uh, so take a look at the starter question. That should get you started with the conversation. One thing I always tell students with discussion is, um, you know, a lot of times what seems to happen is everyone reads the question and everyone just answers the question. And if I wanted you to just answer the question, we, I would have put it in the assignment, you know, and you can answer it yourself. But uh, what's more important in discussion forum is to engage in some kind of discussion about the material. Um, so 
you know, if you're, if you're struggling with understanding something about the material, that's a good place to flesh that out. You don't always have to answer the question and even answer the question properly. Um, what's more important is that you interact with other students and maybe even other students you're asking for help or other students are helping you is fine. Um, so just looking for meaningful posts. One thing I'm not looking for is, you know, you post the answer to the question. So, and I know it's really hard every semester students in like, you know, in the first form, they always want to just answer the question and move on to the next thing. Um, but what's good is in the very beginning of the unit, the very beginning of the week, or, you know, the very beginning of that, that, that unit, uh, if you're in a six week is to post, um, some kind of thoughts about that question. You don't have to answer the question. You can just kind of say, here's some thoughts that I have about the subject or about, um, about what was asked. You don't have to definitively answer it. Then other people might respond to you and say, well, this is what I think, or this is what I think, you know, and, and you might respond to that and say, yeah, that's a good thought, but what about this? And, you know, and that's perfectly fine. So don't focus on writing out a, you know, a perfect answer to the question. Um, instead, focus on interaction. So that's going to be the discussion forums. You'll find more about that in the syllabus as far as how they're graded. Uh, each week or each unit, you'll find lectures. Um, many cases, there'll be more than one lecture material, and there'll also be additional materials. So sometimes I might have some supplementary or additional materials that will help clarify the material or just additional information that might help you further understand the material. So it's a good idea to take a look at that stuff. Um, so more about that running case. Uh, the running cases, um, it's a semester-long individual project. So, uh, so each unit, I'm going to give you some activities to do uh, for the individual uh, project or the running case. Uh, you'll find a copy of that in the book. So if you, if you have the textbook and you look in the, um, the end of each chapter, you'll see the running cases. They're kind of highlighted in a, uh, in a sort of a, uh, a weird color, like a peach color. But the one that we're going to be doing is the on-the-spot courier services. And you'll see an explanation. So, so each week, it will tell you a lot of background about that project, enough information for you to, um, to, to meaningfully answer the questions. And it's not really always questions that it's going to ask you. It's going to ask you to do stuff, um, to create something or create some kind of deliverable. And you'll have a good idea of what that deliverable should look like based on the material in the chapter. So, um, so in each unit, the running case activities are going to align with what we learned about in that unit. Usually some kind of diagramming technique or a modeling technique, or it could be a narrative that you have to write or just answer a few questions, uh, lots of different activities. So you'll be doing that, um, that each week. So that's going to be obviously part of the grade. And again, this is in lieu of uh, any kind of group project. Um, so instead of doing a group project, and like I said, you know, a lot of uh, similar courses to this, they'll tell you everybody form a group and come up with an idea for a project. And I find that, you know, students tend to waste more time coming up with a project idea and stressing about, you know, producing something than they do about learning the actual material. So that's why we're going to do this. Um, obviously, a capstone class is a good place for that kind of group project. But our goal here is to learn how all this stuff works and how we can actually do systems analysis. So in each unit, you'll be asked to work on a portion of the case. It's a fictional company for which you are designing a system. In this case, it's uh, on-the-spot courier service. It's a fictional courier company that's trying to design a uh, system for managing uh, delivering of packages or customers ordering the pickup or delivery of a package or tracking a package. Um, and the idea is that it's a small regional company that does same-day delivery uh, within, a, you know, within a city or something like that. Um, so it's a practical assessment. So this is how, um, how we assess your practical skills. Um, so, so in all the other assignments, you might be answering questions about the material, but here you're actually going to put it to practice. You're actually going to um, to create these diagrams and models that we talk about throughout the semester. So this course is a little different than most other courses that you've probably taken in this program. Um, most courses in computer science or computer technology are, are geared towards hard skills. And your book talks about this a little bit in chapter one, you'll see this. But um, what are hard skills? You know, these are things like programming, coding, uh, database management, database design, system administration, things like that. All that stuff that we, um, you know, that we associate with a technology program. This class is a little bit different, though, because this is soft skills. Another class that would be similar to this one would be something like project management, which, is, uh, which really goes hand-in-hand -hand with this course. Project management and systems analysis and design um, really kind of go together. Um, but those are soft skills. So it's a little bit different than what you might be used to. So I know a lot of students feel kind of like a fish out of water when they take a class like this. But 
Um, but hopefully we can guide you through the material and everything will make sense. And, uh, and by the end, you'll be, everyone will be a systems analyst um, or at least qualified to be a systems analyst. If you have any questions, please let us know. Um, by all means, you can check the instructor uh, background tab in Blackboard and it will give you some information on how to contact me. Thank you.